and welcome to the Three I Regenerate Tribe podcast today, where we delve deep into topics that are essential for the understanding of sustainability. Today, we're going to talk about something crucial in the realm of environmental conservation and development. And the question we're trying to answer today is, what is an environmental impact assessment, often abbreviated as EIA? Now, Lauren and I have tried to do our research, um, but we are by no means experts in this field. However, in the spirit of helping our community at large and getting clarity and the demand for an answer to this question, today we will do our best to deliver for you. So, Lauren. In, indeed, Richard. Indeed, we will do our best. Hi, everyone. It is a great pleasure to... Um, share with you again uh, another great podcast and can i just say can i just say to any experts out there in the field of sustainability we would love to hear from you so please reach out to us uh, and contact uh, either richard or myself uh, if you would like to uh, share your expertise uh, with uh, with us and our tribe and uh, and everyone so now, what is environmental impact assessment? It is, it is a vital process that helps us evaluate and mitigate the potential environmental effects of various projects and activities. But before we dive deeper, let's start with the basics. Always important. What exactly is environmental impact assessment, Richard? Okay, let's, let's try and break it down a little bit. Um, environmental Impact Assessment, or EIA, as I said, is essentially a systematic process used to identify, predict, evaluate, and mitigate the environmental effects of a proposed projects or developments. It's like a comprehensive evaluation tool that helps decision makers understand how a project might affect the environment before it's actually implemented. Very good, very good. So it's like a, a preemptive uh, measure to ensure that our actions don't harm the environment more than uh, necessary. Exactly, exactly. So what, what it's constructing, um, so whether it's constructing a new highway, building a factory, um, or even launching a new mining operation, for, some, for example, all these activities have the potential to affect the environment in various ways. Now, EIA helps in assessing those potential impacts across different environmental components like air quality, water resources, the use of the land, biodiversity that's affected, and even social economic factors like local communities and potentially cultural heritage sites. Wow, that sounds like a, a crucial step uh, in ensuring a sustainable development, isn't it? Uh, so can Absolutely. you walk us through uh, the key step uh, involved in uh, environmental impact assessment and uh, in a bit more detail? Okay, um, yes. let's try and look at each, each sort of step of the process. Um, I'll try and go through these as simply as I can. Um, there are several steps um, that are crucial um, for a very thorough assessment. And one of the, I suppose, one of the key points already is how thorough this should be. This is not a sort of skim across the top. This is really sort of quite a deep dive. So step number one is screening. So the initial step determines whether a project requires a full environmental impact assessment. Um, it considers factors like the project size, um, the location, potential impacts on sensitive ecosystems, and the presence of protected areas, because eventually it might actually be stopped at this stage if it's if it's in a really protected area, for example. Number two is scoping. I'm like any project here. The scope and boundaries of the assessment are defined in consultation with any stakeholders, um, in, internal and external, and also industry experts. Now, this includes in this scoping um, phase identifying key environmental issues um, to be studied in depth, such as air, water quality, noise pollution, habitat disturbance, and potential effects on human health. Um, next 
um, is an important step, sometimes sort of forgotten, is the baseline, um, baseline what's, what's the right word, data collection. Now, this step involves um, gathering comprehensive data about the existing environment before the project, okay? Um, so that this can include things on the study of the flora and fauna, soil quality, water quality, um, air quality, social and eco um, economic aspects like employment patterns and cultural significance of the area. And this is very important for later on to see the actual or measure the actual effect or potential effect on this area. Yes. Number four, so is the impact prediction. So again, using scientific modeling, um, assessments and data analysis, experts predict the potential um, environmental impacts of the proposed project. Now, this includes evaluating both direct impacts, those that occur immediately when the project is sort of going, and indirect impacts, for example, those that occur over time or in a broader geographical area. So where does this sort of filter out into maybe adjoining environments, if I can use that terminology? Yes. Next, number five is impact assessment. This stage involves evaluating the predicted impacts in terms of their significance and their severity. Because obviously, if you're going to do a project in, in, a, in a greenfield site, you're going to have an impact, yeah? So now we need to look at what is the severity of it. Um, and so that's really this stage. And this considers factors like, well, how, how long is this project going to take? How big is this project? Yeah, the magnitude of it and the spatial extent of the impact. Where is it going to spread out to? For example, EIA for a new industrial plant would assess its potential emissions, waste generation and resource consumption and the implications on the surrounding environments. So, for example, if you've got a river running through it, what is going to be the effect upstream, downstream, and immediately there? Okay. Next, uh, number six now, mitigating measures. Based on the previous assessment, the idea is to implicate, implement mitigation strategies are developed to minimise or offset the negative impacts of the project. This can include measures like pollution control technologies, habitat restoration plans, green infrastructure development, and eventually community engagement programs. Okay, so that's a, again, that's the mitigation idea, what you can actually do with it. Next, monitoring and reporting. Once the project is underway, continuous monitoring is done to ensure that mitigation measures are effective in reducing the environmental impact as predicted. Regular reporting is also crucial to keep um, stakeholders informed about the project's environmental performance, any changes in the impact assessment or any of the mitigation strategies that you may need, because, as you can understand, there might be you know, bigger impacts or smaller impacts or, you know, so therefore you might be a need to in introduce new mitigation strategies or actually, you know, cut back or increase the mitigation strategies that you already put in place because they're not working, maybe. OK, so those are the seven right. key points. Um, and later on, we'll have a look at some examples and just use those those sort of seven key points. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Richard, uh, for those key points. Wow, what a, a very uh, impressive, uh, comprehensive, uh, uh, you know, uh, explanation. Uh, on uh, those uh, environmental impact assessment process uh, and all those uh, those steps, uh, I'm assuming as well it's uh, involving uh, stakeholders and the public uh, is a crucial part of this process, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, the the I think one of the great things about the EIA from from the research that we've done is the fact that it does start to bring about or you know naturally sort of implement or imply that you need to have public participation stakeholder engagement uh, a fundamental principles that go with this eia um, it ensures transparency accountability inclusivity decision making which are all part of sort of sdgs as well yeah so if you look at those it, it links is. very very quickly into sdgs yes. so stakeholders including the local community environmental groups government agencies and businesses provide valuable insights in this process and expertise and feedback throughout the assessment process. 
Um, and Thank that's you. very vital. Um, and if I could just sort of digress a little bit here, I think that whole communication package, because if you're dealing with stakeholders, you've got to communicate, is very important. And something myself and, and well, yourself and myself are very much implied in is this positivity with regards to sustainability. And I think it starts here. I think a lot of projects don't start here. And obviously, they're fighting in their communication because everybody comes up with all sorts of assumptions and presumptions and it all gets out of hand. So this helps to address the concerns, identifying additional impacts and exploring, therefore, the alternative solutions collaboratively with the stakeholders and, and, the, and the public at large. And I think that's very, very important. Very good. Uh, yes, it is indeed uh, very important. Um, I agree, uh, Richard. That's uh, really important to fostering uh, trust, collaboration, uh, and uh, ensuring that uh, all perspectives are, are considered. Uh, now, let's uh, talk about some of the benefits of conducting uh, an environmental impact assessment a bit more in detail, Richard, please. Okay. So, I mean, certainly, I mean, one of the primary benefits is that EIA helps in identifying potential environmental risks early in the project planning phase. Um, and I don't think you can underestimate the importance of this because this allows for informed decision making and also the implementation of proactive measures to minimize harm to the environment from the get-go so for instance if an eia identifies a risk of habitat destruction for an endangered species measures can be taken to modify project designs or implement conservation plans to protect the species and its habitat very good, very good. And I assume it also helps uh, in promoting sustainable development uh, by balancing economic growth and uh, with uh, environmental protection. Yeah, because it's, it's always seen as, as quite a fight. So absolutely. I mean, EIA promotes a balanced approach to development by considering the environment, social and economic factors simultaneously. Um, it ensures that development projects are carried out in a manner that minimizes sort of the adverse environmental impacts which will surely happen um, while maximizing social benefits and economic opportunities. And I think if you look at sustain what we mean by sustainability, that is sort of it. Yeah. Because um, if we start yeah. behaving responsibly yes. early on, we can actually do it. So for example, an EIA with a renewable energy project would assess its environmental footprint, social acceptance and economic feasibility to ensure it contributes positively to the sustainability uh, goals. And I think that's yes. very important. So true, so true, Richard. Wow, what a great uh, podcast uh, today. Uh, <laughs> that's incredibly important, especially in today's uh, world, where sustainability and resilience uh, are the top priority uh, right now uh, to uh, sustain and regenerate, you know. Uh, so, well... It looks like uh, we've uh, covered the basics uh, uh, and more about uh, the environmental uh, impact assessment, Richard. Uh, let's, um, let us uh, now have a look uh, at a couple of uh, examples uh, to add a bit of context where and how the environmental impact assessment may be used. Uh, okay. Richard, yeah, yeah. Yeah, can you go through uh, first uh, an example? Yeah, let me let me go through. Let's go through an example now. Just very importantly, what we've done here is is we've taken an example of it's not a real life example. It's a, it's an idea. So, and we'll go through a couple just to see how they what's the right word how they move differently with the EIA. Okay, so the first one we we'll take. Let's imagine because <laughs> it's happening all the time a highway construction project. Okay. So, first of all, let's imagine a government is planning to build a new highway connecting major cities, okay? Before construction begins, an EIA would be conducted to assess potential environmental impact. So, this is how it might unfold, okay? And bear in mind, this is an example at this point. Yes, so, first yes, of all, this, the first one we went through, screening. The project size, yeah? Its location. Potential impacts on habitats, on water bodies, rivers, lakes, ponds, whatever it may be and air quality should be evaluated. Now, if significant impacts are expected, a full EIA is conducted. Now, again, you probably can make an assumption on this that the highway construction project is gonna have a, a big impact, yeah? Because it's generally big, okay? Yes. 
So then you would move on to the next part, which is the scoping of the whole project. And this assessment focuses on key issues such as the land use changes, yeah, because obviously if you're going to build over someone's lands, what, what, what do we lose? Okay, the noise pollution, highway, potentially massive if it starts going close to a town or a village or whatever, and the disruption of wildlife habitats and potential water pollution from any runoffs, because if anybody's seen what runs off a road, you understand yes. what that means. So how do you deal with that? And maybe you bring that in la- later on in this EIA, okay? Then what you need to do, the next step, is the baseline data collection. Data is collected yes. on existing flora, fauna, air quality, obviously in this case going to be very important, water resources, potentially very, very important, and social economic conditions in the project area, okay? So are you going to start having an effect um, upon things that, are, you know, in local communities, et cetera? Um, I mean, I just, just as a slight digress and story, um, that here locally where we live, they wanted to build a big tunnel. Um, there's there's lots of opposition. Nobody knew whether it, where it was going to go, where it uh-huh. was going to come out. Finally, after something like 50 years of consultation, they actually brought out a map, which actually turns out to be coming out very close to where I live. But when you look in detail at the map, you actually notice that where the tunnel will exit, they've already built houses on. So someone's got a very old plan and obviously haven't combined the two together. And so you can sort of actually say on this one, the econ- the social economic effect on somebody is going to be pretty dramatic because the tunnel is going to come out in their mm-hmm. front land. So um, there needs to be a revision put on that one. Sorry, I digress, but I thought it was quite a funny story. Um, Thanks for cheering. Thanks for cheering, Richard. (laughs) Next one, impact (laughs) prediction. Um, So this is very obviously very important. Models and simulations are used to predict how the highway construction might affect the wildlife, Um, migration patterns, air quality, obviously due to the increased traffic, and potential soil erosion from construction activities because – there's the end product, which is the road, highway in this case, we call it. Um, but there's also the fact that they've got to construct it. So you've got all of that. And I mean, if anybody's, uh, I mean, again, here in Switzerland, take an example. If you go to Sion, there's a beautiful lake up there that you can go swimming on. That comes, that lake actually comes from building of the motorway. So because they dug out all the gravel from there, et cetera, et cetera. So there is massive impact. Um while they're building so that impact assessment you know before during and after is very very important and lastly the monitoring and reporting during construction and after completion and the continuous monitoring is done to ensure that migration measures that we've said that we put in place are are being effective in what we said that they would do and any unforeseen impacts are starting to be addressed and addressed promptly okay very good. Can I hand Very over to good. you, Lauren? Maybe you can go through project number two. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> well done. Yes, we were, with pleasure. And the project number two, imagine a uh, uh, urban uh, development project. Let's consider a scenario where a city plans to develop a new commercial and residential area near a river bank. And uh, an EIA would be crucial in assessing and mitigating potential environmental impact. So let's imagine, uh, let's first start start with the screening. The project location near the river triggers a full environmental impact assessment due to potential impacts on water quality, flood risk, and ecosystem health. First, uh, second scoping, the assessment includes studies on flood risk assessment, uh, risk management, water quality monitoring, preservation of riparian habitants, uh, habitat, and potential traffic congestion. So pretty, uh, so pretty important uh, scope. <laughs> wow. Uh, second, uh, third one, basic baseline data collection, comprehensive data on river health, flood patterns, soil composition, biodiversity, and social economic aspects of nearby community are collected. So a fair bit of uh, data. Next, impact prediction. Assessments predict impacts such as altered river flow, 
increased pollution from uh, runoff, habitat fragmentation, and change in the local microclimates due to a urban heat island effect. Wow, quite a quite a lot of uh, impact to uh, to predict uh, here on uh, on that uh, example. Next. Impact assessment mitigation measure may include green infrastructure like uh, permeable pavements, rain gardens, floodplain restoration, and community education program on water conservation. That's a good one. I lo we love the education, Richard. <laughs> so uh, yes, well, uh, good one. And next, monitor next and last. Uh, step in the process, monitoring and reporting. Post-construction monitoring ensures that water quality remains within acceptable limits. Flood risk is managed effectively and community feedback is considered for ongoing improvement. Richard, uh, good, uh, good example, huh? It's a great example, and obviously, I, I think most of us probably listening, or most of you listening to this, have, have probably been near a you know a development that that's come up, and you know you either like it or don't like it. If it's on your doorstep, you don't like it, but also there's a lot of other considerations around it, and I think that's that's very very important indeed. Um, yes. And I love the idea of the rain gardens and the floodplain restoration. That one, I think, might be slightly not used enough, maybe. Maybe we need to yes. think about that one, particularly when you look yes. at some of the bad things that happen um, where water is run off um, and basically flooding more and more. Yeah, and saw a great Indeed. documentary on that the other day. Um, but shall I go through another one? Let's, let's, go, mm -hmm. let's go through another one. Let me take you through this one. Um, yeah. On yes. mining operation expansion. Now, let, just to sort of set the scene for this example, so let's imagine you're in a rural area, a mining company plans to expand its already existing operations. An EIA is crucial to assess and address potential environmental impacts. And again, if you think about the use of EIA, this is classically where you've got that expanding company. It's probably seen as quite a positive to local industry. Yeah. So the, the local community is probably liking this thing. Then it wants to develop and expand. The EIA comes in and steps in and then they can assess what the impact is going to be. So the first bit of the, the screening process, the expansion project scale, you know, how big is it going to be? Where is it going to go? The location and this would probably trigger a full, or well, almost definitely trigger a full EIA due to the potential impacts on land degradation, water resources, air quality, and biodiversity. So some major, major impacts predicted if you look at the screening. Then scoping it, the assessment focuses on issues such as soil erosion, because if they're going to dig a bloody great hole, <laughs> it's going to make have a difference. Water contamination from minor mine tailing. So that's all the stuff that they don't want. What happens to it? Where does it go? Plus all the stuff that they're using to get it out. How are they actually going to mine it? That will be a big part of that. Habitat loss for any endangered species and social e e economic impacts on local community. Positive and negative on that one, yeah, because potentially there's more jobs. Sure. Potentially, they you know they may need they may bring in extra people. Therefore, an effect yes. on housing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, those can all have big, big effects on it. Um, so that's a, that's an interesting one. Now, the baseline collection. Next point um, in this process: data collection on the soil quality, the water sources, the vegetation types, the wildlife populations, what actually exists there air emissions and the community livelihoods as we just mentioned so some baseline data there that you will need yes. to collect in order to sort of put some measures in place and see what is actually going to happen as you proceed then the model predicts impacts um, like increased sedimentation in water bodies because obviously if you're mining you're digging a big hole let's say you're going to be washing your stones your rocks whatever it is you're doing and a lot of that sediment is probably going to go into a nearby river. The nearby river is then going to actually get sedimented up. And what are the consequences of that? Slower flowing, increased floods potential. And it's not going to be just outside the mine. It's potentially down the river somewhere. So that that does need to be taken into, uh, um, into effect. 
chemical leaching from any mining activities. Unfortunately, a lot of the mining, um, you know, they use all sorts of different chemicals, but there's all sorts of chemicals in their cars and their machines because obviously there's big heavy machinery. So what happens to the leaking of all of that? Where does it go? Answer probably into the river, but how can you, what can you do to sort of mitigate that? But what's the impact, potential impact to that? Um, nust, noise and dust pollution, obviously huge, and changes in land use and land and patterns. Okay, so that's quite an interesting one because I do think if you look at that, that's that's going to be a big change in where are they going to be seeping towards maybe housing, schooling, et cetera, et cetera. Um, next impact is the impact assessment. So mitigation measures here could include things like reclamation plans for the distribution disturbed disturbed area, not distribution, um, water treatment facilities. Um, wildlife corridors, so basically making some safe zones for, for whatever animal wildlife it is to get from A to B, dust suppression measures, and a community development project to enhance local infrastructure. Um, I was just watching the big lorries going in and out of a huge construction here in Geneva and watching them all get sprayed off in the morning. I was just wondering whether I could get my car in there for a quick quick wash. But uh, <laughs> I thought they might, not, they, might, well, they might not be convinced that I'm one of their lorries. But anyway, sorry. <laughs> a good one, mate. <laughs> <laughs> monitoring and reporting. So ongoing monitoring ensures compliance with environmental regulations, effectiveness of any mitigation measures that, that have been put in place. And obviously there will be a few and adaptation to the changing environmental conditions over time. So, again, a really nice example, I think, of, of you know, the, of how the EIA can really be used in a positive way to sort of predict what's going to happen, which is always difficult. Yes, so true, so true, Richard. Thank you so much for sharing this example. And I hope uh, we will definitely uh, share uh, this uh, podcast and, uh, and this example with uh, the big mining industry in Australia. <laughs> uh, and uh, I will be pleased to share with all the uh, mining contacts uh, that I worked with in the past in Australia. Because, of course, uh, as it is, uh, it is the number one industry uh, there. Uh, and uh, being, being Having been part of uh, one project that was uh, uh, impacting, uh, you know, measuring the impact on the environment, uh, I, I'm very, uh, I'm very proud of that. Uh, so very good, very good. Yeah, thanks for sharing with you this example. My pleasure. Those My pleasure. examples show uh, that um, environmental impact assessment is applied applied across different types of projects to identify potential uh, environmental uh, risk and propose mitigation uh, measure. Uh, it's uh, like uh, in business. In business, we're always uh, mitigating uh, the risk. Uh, here, uh, you know, uh, we're mitigate, mitigating as well with measure the impact that we are making, uh, you know, uh, for each uh, project. And it is really crucial uh, after all, now uh, it is our own responsibility, uh, isn't it, Richard? Uh, you know, oh, for, uh, for the planet. Huh? Yeah, no, and uh, I mean, I'll, I'll come back to you because I think you did some good work. I mean, remember we're looking at one of the mining projects and the fact that in their project sort of, you know, bid, I mean, is actually all the environmental issues of putting it back to to the right state after the event as well so i mean there's all the sort of yes, mitigation indeed. there's all the measures in place before but also the the absolute compliance to put it back to a proper state including planting trees and grasses etc to stop the erosion after it's finished which i thought was yes. really good anyway yeah, yeah, thank, thank, thank you lauren you. so um, i invite uh, just to finish and pass you the, uh, the hand uh, the floor uh, I, I invite uh, all businesses uh, in the world to uh, ensure that they implement and apply sustainable development practices for the good of uh, your business, for the good of your employees, and for the good of all uh, and the planet. Fantastic. Thank well, you, I'm Richard. On. Good stuff. Okay, thank you, Laura, and thank you for all of you out there listening. And we hope this discussion has provided you with some valuable insights into the importance, um, the process and the benefits of environmental impact assessment. And hopefully you understand a bit more now about what it is. Um, now, as mentioned at the beginning, um, we are not at all experts in this area and we would love to speak 
to an expert or experts in this area and eventually see if we can get their insights and best practices for EIA for our listeners. Um, and that would be that would be encountering this in the near future. So if you are an expert or you know a person, please do not hesitate to get in contact with us. We would love to have your input for the benefit of our 3i community and all of you listening out there and and help us continue with getting further clarity so if you're out there please please do get in contact we'd love to hear from you so for all our yes, members please. of three i generate tribe um i want to and want who want to dive a little bit deeper into this um we've actually added on our membership website we've added a short video of some real life case studies so we've we've adopted the same principle we've gone through the different stages but they're real life um case studies i think they i think there's I think five or six or seven. I can't remember, but there's, yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a few. Um, so thank you very much for listening. Jump into the way. If you're not a member of the Three Eye Tribe, then you, sh- then you should be. So so go and go and look at the links below and and sign up immediately. Um, otherwise, stay tuned and follow us on on YouTube where you might be watching this. If you're not watching it on the membership site, um, stay tuned. Follow us and more um, episodes on important sustainability issues will be coming your way. So until next time, take care. And if you're not joined the tribe yet, please do so. We'd love to see you on the other side, as they say. Thanks very much indeed. Have a good day. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Have a great day. Thanks, Laura. Thank you, Richard.